are going to see more and more of these visitors from space and that before too long the evidence will be incontroversial that uh, you will have on your TV screens and on your movie screens concrete evidence that the ships are here and that they are real and they're not fantastic things which have been cooked up to make a movie. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any agency of the United States. There's nothing to hide at all. Flying saucers is a catch-all term for unusual lights occurring in the sky. We've been able to explain them as uh, hoaxes, as erroneously identified friendly aircraft, as meteorological or electronic phenomena, or as light aberration. examined would indicate any proof at all that we are being visited by extraterrestrials. There is absolutely no evidence. We have not been hiding anything. civilizations in this enormous and incredibly ancient universe of ours.
had us on television. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Hey, turn that thing up, will you? Roswell today for the 30th reunion of the Army's renowned 509. The Rocky Day Bomb is not all the 509 is famous for. For more than six hours in July of 1947, the town of Roswell was known as the flying saucer capital of the world. <laughs> Debris recovered from a crash site in the desert was originally identified by Army intelligence officer Major Jesse Marcel as seen from a flying saucer. But the party didn't last too long much to the embarrassment of the Army, and in particular, Major Marcel, shown here holding what turned out to be a piece of aluminum foil from a weather balloon. I told you this would happen. I can handle it. Jesse, my God, I didn't know you'd be here. I heard you weren't doing well. Oh, yeah, it's a little something about my chest. I'm sorry. Mm. Well, you're, you're here now. What the hell else counts, huh? Mm. How's, uh, uh, Vi? Oh, she's fine. She's fine. She's with me. Yeah. So is my son. Yeah. He drove us down. He's a doctor now in Montana. Not bad for an army, Brad. No. no. Louis, could I talk to you a little bit later? Yeah, you're going to be here at the barbecue, right? No, I mean alone. Let it go, Jesse. For your own sake. Welcome back to KGFM, the voice of Roswell. General, you and I were both here in 1947. Oh, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about UFOs. You know, the 509th ought to be remembered for all the good things it did, not for one dumb, stupid screw-up. Major Marcel made a mistake. Big deal. So what? Shit happens. Satisfied? Jesse Marcel. When it comes to UFOs, as far as I'm concerned, it's a big bag of bullshit. Out of the way. End of Here story. I come, the man from outer space. <laughs> Thank you to your leader, 509. <laughs> Remember, you said you weren't going to get back into this. It seems to me that I never got out of it. Oh, Jess, you promised. Oh, I said I'd think about it. That's all I said. Dad. Don't do this. You made a deal. Did I? Oh. 
hell's wrong with you? Come on. Marcel? Uh, yes, Deputy Pritchard down at the Sheriff's Office. Yeah, Deputy, what can I do for you? Uh, well, sir, the Sheriff thinks maybe you should come on down, because you see this here uh, local rancher just brought in a whole lot of, I don't know what you'd call it, but he claims it all came down at his place, and the Sheriff thinks it might be something you guys sent up. Something, you know, top secret? Like a missile! Uh, right, like, say, maybe a missile. But if it ain't, it's flying saucer. That's telling him. Sir. Major? Yes, that Colonel. What? In private? The sheriff calls at the ranch. Gentlemen, this uh, sheriff prone to drinking? Not that I know of. Now well, maybe it's uh, some sort of cowboy humor. Could be. I just figured you wanted to uh, check it out, sir, just in case. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Sorry, Major. Yeah, I guess I Something uh, odd crash nearby. Well, it uh, couldn't have been anything of ours. I'd have heard about it from the Pentagon. We know that, Sherman. You're our pipeline to knowledge. Come with us. You and Marsh are up for some bridge this weekend. Well, I don't know. I'll have to check on it. If you know what's good for you. <laughs> and now, Frank Joyce with the local news. Well, it's been kind of an interesting day here in Roswell. We have in our studio Mac Brazel. Mac, could you tell us exactly what it is you found up there on your ranch? Yeah, well, well, I'd say most likely it's some that come from another planet. Everything out there was real strange. Like from one of them flying saucers. Well, we have been hearing all last month about people seeing strange things in the air. But if you were right, we may have one on the ground. Where'd you say this stuff came down? A ranch, about 60 miles west of here. Run by a fellow named Brazel. Any ideas? Hey, how'd your interview go? Pretty good, I guess. You the fella brought this in? You know what? It might not be a bad idea if y'all got somebody out there cleaning that mess up. Or whatever the hell that is, scatter all up and down my place, and the damn sheep won't cross through it. When exactly did you find this stuff? About three days ago, right after that last storm. What made you bring it in here? Well, a neighbor of mine said that uh, it might be part of one of them, you know, flying saucers we've been hearing about. She said there's some newspaper offering a $3,000 reward for a piece of it. And to be honest with you, I could use the money. Hey, look at this. Whoa. Yeah, I really like that one. Mind if we keep some of this stuff? I reckon not. I can always get more. Y'all see the damn place. I'll meet you back at the base. Yes, sir. I gotta warn you, it's quite a ways out there. Turning out to be a rather interesting day.
thing landed or crashed or whatever is about 10 miles south. I reckon we'll stay here tonight. Come on. We're staying in here? What? Well, hell no, that's the barn, man. Let's stay at the main house. Come on. Here's the biggest piece of it I've found so far. Hold it out on my truck. Oh, it's as light as a feather. Oh my God, this thing was big. Anything? Uh-uh. You know those Japanese balloon bombs? Yeah, made of rice paper, about 30 feet in diameter. They don't come apart when they land unless a bomb goes off. Then you see chart marks everywhere. Right. Was this gouge here before? Nope. All right. Let's just suppose Los Alamos or White Sands launched some ultra experimental plane, rocket, whatever. They'd be out looking for it. Maybe they are, maybe they can't find it. That's happened. Sherman, look around you. What do you see? I mean, what do you see geographically? This place may be remote by car, but not by plane. You'd have to be blind not to spot this from the air. Nobody's found anything because nobody's out looking. And that means this ain't ours. Mr. Brazel! Yeah? You may have just earned yourself 3,000 bucks. Huh. about to see, all right? Not even to your closest friend. Oh, is it top secret? Well, not yet. Y you mean you think it's gonna be? Yeah, I do. Dad, you have my word. Okay. All right. I want you to tell me what you think this is. Oh, Jess, it's a mess. Take a closer look. We 
Where'd you get this? Someone's ranch. Hey, is it from a crash? How do you know about that? We heard about it on the radio. Everybody's talking about it. Can I keep this piece? Please, Dad. Sure. Why not? We got lots more of those. Thanks. Hey, take a look at this one. Looks like an ordinary piece of tinfoil, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, why scratch it? Watch this. I fold. And I fold. And just for good measure, I fold again. Abracadabra. How did you do that? Beats me. Hey. Hey, look, there's something written in here. Look. I think it's Egyptian. I don't think so. Maybe it's Chinese. No. No, it's not. Son, you may be the first person in human history ever to see writing from another world. Russian? Sure hope not. Did you try a cutting torch? Didn't do a thing, sir. Yeah, but you got the uh, Russian. Sir? Who this written up as a press release? Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. Is this a joke? No, it's not. This flying object landed on a ranch in Roswell sometime last week. Not having phone facilities, the rancher stored the disc until such time when he was able to contact the sheriff's office, who in turn notified Major Jesse A. Marcel of the 509th Palm Group Intelligence Office. How come they never even mentioned my name? Maybe one of the other papers will. Now we're getting calls from Hong Kong. How the hell did they find out about it so fast? That thing went out on radio as well. The London Times. I'm not in. Sheriff isn't in. Cheerio. Boys, what do you say we shut down this phone answering business, get on out to that ranch, and have a look at this damn thing for ourselves? Have our orders. Whose orders? Colonel Blanchard, sir. This is turning into a regular circus. Hey, Sergeant. Oh. oh! Identification. Are you kidding me? Sorry, sir. Everyone has to do it. Colonel Blanchard's orders. I don't think I ever told you this, Jess, but uh, I almost got to drop a fat man on Hiroshima. You did? Yeah. Oh, Paul Tibbetts had men on the go out a minute. Yeah. I always thought that was my only shot at the history books, but uh, now I see it wasn't. Interesting how things come around. Sort of like uh, fate. Yeah. Yeah. General Ramey on the line, sir. I'll get it. 
General? What the hell is wrong with you? Pardon? You know what I'm talking about. What do you think this is, April Fool's Day? What kind of a goddamn idiot released this nonsense? And sir, if I did something wrong, I'm sorry, but... Sir, as far as we can ascertain, not even Los Alamos was testing anything like this. Major Marcel and I have been checking all morning. Now, no disrespect intended, sir, but if you guys know something that we don't, you should have told us. I mean, we're just... All right, listen. You think it's Soviet? No, we do not think it's Russian. Have you sir, excuse... Excuse me, sir. With all due respect, I did inform Washington. I informed General McMullen. Personally? Personally, that is correct, sir. When? Yesterday, as soon as I saw the stuff. In fact, at his specific request, sir, I sent him some samples and they would have reached Washington by uh, last night. I want to see the material myself. Yes, sir. I'll send someone right to you. No, no, no. There's no problem. Been bringing it from the side all day. Yes, sir, I understand. I'm going to see you in Fort Worth. Me? Yeah. Welcome to Fort Worth. General Remy's waiting. Thank you. I want you to get on the right now. You gotta get these boxes unloaded, and I mean right now. Let's move it. I'd say it was right about here. Sir, there's, uh, there's an access road that comes in from the east that, uh, well, not on this map. It's, it's pretty bad. I can't imagine it would be. There's a windmill about 100 yards south of the large gouge where the object must have hit. There's debris scattered everywhere. I have never seen anything like it. Sir. Major, we have some reporters coming. We'll show them the debris that the rancher found. You will keep your mouth shut, and I will field all questions. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Get the reporters. I don't understand. What's this? This is what you found. No. Oh, sir, this is a... Uh, well, this is a weather balloon. I mean... Uh, yeah. This is the... Uh, this is the part that hangs down that reflects the radar. I mean, this is ordinary foil. It's tin foil. We send these up every day. So that may be true, Major, but the fact is... This is what you found. And from now on, you're not to talk to anyone about this. That includes your family. Understood? Yes, sir. Now, this is Warren Officer Irving Newton, Weather Officer at Fort Worth. Now, tell us, what's your opinion? It's a weather balloon. I, I guess what made this one here so confusing is that it has this radar target attached. And quite frankly, I'm a bit surprised that someone with Major Marcel's experience didn't recognize it for what it was. Major Marcel, would you hold this for the reporters, please? In fact, if you would kneel down, I think they could get everything into the same picture. Thank you. This just in. What goes up must come down. Bad news, folks. Seems our flying saucer is more like an empty teacup. According to General Ramey, Major Marcel should have realized that what the rancher had found was, in fact, nothing but a weather balloon. Talk about having confidence in your army. And here I was planning on inviting the Martians on this show so we could hear their side. Sure saved me from a lot of embarrassment, I'll tell you. <laughs> mm -mm. What are they talking about? We, we held it in our hands. You saw it, too.
Hello? Hi, son. Dad, uh, where are you? I can't tell you that. I just want you and Mom to know that I'm fine. Okay. Um, Dad said he's fine. When will you really be back? I don't know. I might have to stay on a day or two. Sir. But they have we cookouts tomorrow night. Hey, I know that. You better believe I'm going to try my darnest to be there, all right? Dad, are you okay? Yeah. Put your mother on. I love you, son. Jess? Hi, hon. Hi. Are you really okay? Yeah. Yeah, I really am. Okay. I love you. Look, I, uh, I gotta go. I love you, too. Bye, hon. happening around here since I've been gone because I saw planes coming into Fort Worth carrying boxes I know came from here and somehow I don't think it's laundry they're unloading so if I'm the fall guy on this I want to know what I'm the fall guy for and I'll be a good soldier let me see your report Sherman I don't know what you're talking about the hell you don't let me put it this way if there were such a report it would almost certainly be classified by now and you would not be authorized to see it Sherman I can't do it. I outrank you. And this is an order. It doesn't matter that you outrank me. I'm not answerable to you on this, Jess. I make my reports to the Pentagon directly. That is my mandate. We want a war by keeping our mouths shut. If you have a problem with that, I suggest you take it up with Washington. talk about it i'm sorry uh, if they say it's a weather balloon son it's a weather balloon but do you believe it that's not the issue but dad honey don't ask your father any more questions son i'm gonna need that piece back i gave to you they'd asked if i kept any pieces why i am not in a position to ask those sorts of questions all right I have been ordered not to discuss it. And a soldier obeys orders. 
That is the first thing you'll learn when you go into the military. I'm not going to be a soldier. Where'd you put the piece? It's in my room. Joyce. than I ever did. Well, I probably do. But there's a few things missing. Like what happened here at the base when I was off in Fort Worth. That's what I'd like to know. Why? Because I don't want to go down on the history books as some damn jackass that made a ridiculous mistake. Hell, I know what a weather balloon looks like. Everyone does. Frank, I've been living with this thing for so long building up inside of me, you know. Do you mind? Hmm. And unfortunately, in my case anyway, it doesn't come out soon. It's not going to come out at all. Maybe you shouldn't have that. It's too late for me. I'm thinking of telling what I know. Telling? Who? Newspapers. Maybe you. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Why don't we go outside? <clears throat> Judd Roberts, he was my station manager. He and I, we never really believed that balloon story. But you know, you got to be careful. Just uh, real careful. According to General Ramey, what may have confused them all was a radar tracking device suspended underneath it. Well, so much for the little green men. And now it's back to music. You don't believe it? Frank, if it's a weather balloon, tell me how come Brazel's ranch was all cordoned off when we got there? And if it was a weather balloon, how could Marcel not recognize it when the damn things are sent up by the 509 twice a day from that rooftop across the street? I mean, you just look up and there they are. Balloons! Have they come down at my place, your place, everybody's place? Even my dogs recognize the damn things by now. I think we should go find that rancher. Let's do it. Over there, isn't that him? Hey, Mac! Mac! Yeah, we talk to you? Yeah, what do y'all need? 
Have you seen this? What? This weather... Weather balloon? That's a bunch of horse shit. The harassed rancher... That, that, that's harassed. That's horse shit, too. I'll tell you what this is about. You Matt Brazel? Some... Yeah. You're coming with me. Hey, wait, what? Hey, 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 wait, hey, wait, some bitch is trying to take, take my money. That's all it's all about. Trying to steal my men. You go get it. Now, what I heard was that they took him to the base and grilled him for three days. I'm going to tell you something y'all better listen to. You don't got no right doing this. You hear me? I'm a private goddamn citizen. You understand me? I'll tell you something else. I'm going to write my congressman. You bet your sweet ass I'm going to write my congressman. Oh, I don't know what the hell this country's going to. Mr. Brazel. It's Brazel. God damn it, you ain't know my goddamn name. We were talking before about what it means to be a patriot. You don't know what that means, mister. You better read the Bill of Rights. Where does it say thing in the Bill of Rights about kidnapping private citizens off the street, huh? Why don't you show me that amendment? Show me that page number, man. The national security's at stake. Rules don't mean God damn it, I don't want to hear that shit anymore either. Christ, you think I'm some kind of fool who's gonna wear a cowboy hat? I know what I saw. I held up my goddamn hands. They said the material was a weather balloon. Well, how in the hell does a weather balloon affect our national security? Huh? Maybe I'm too stupid than I think I am. I, I don't get this. I mean, unless you all are expecting some sort of surprise balloon attack. Look, <laughs> there's just two possibilities here. Either that damn thing is a flying saucer, or it ain't. And if it is, well, I'm owed $3,000. And if it ain't, it's real simple. I ain't owed nothing. If you get my drift. Now, you say this is completely authorized? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's completely authorized. And, you know, I think it's time we set the record straight. I reckon I knew all along that that stuff out there wasn't from outer space. And after all them stories come out about it... And he just out and out recants. Says his conscience has been bothering him a lot, so he, he figured he'd better tell everyone what really went on out there. And maybe he wouldn't feel so bad. You found this... A half month earlier? Yeah, thereabouts. I mean, he just lay out there for a while. I didn't think nothing of it. I started hearing all them stories about flying discs. And some neighbors stopped by my place one afternoon. They said something about somebody offering a reward, pieces of disc or whatever. And I figured, what the hell, I'll give it a shot. But the debris? Well, yeah, I mean, that was just uh, tin foil and scotch tape balsa wood, I guess. Hell, I never thought it'd cause this kind of hollow blue. Thanks, Mac. Off the record. What's the truth? The truth? <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. You know how sometimes folks, they talk about little green men? Well, they ain't green. Him? I don't know. I'm not sure I want to know. Yeah. Listen, thanks. I appreciate it. Hey, tread easy. It's not a game. Scotch and soda? Make that too. I want to know what was in that report. It's been 30 years, Sherman. I think you can tell me now. What report? July 1947. First off, I wasn't even here during that whole time. 
I wasn't what on the base. I was on leave. No, we went up to that ranch together. If you believe that, I can only tell you that your recollection is faulty because I wasn't here at the time, all right? Well, no, it's not all right. Dance time, dear. Excuse us, won't you? This isn't good for you. Really, Jess. I know. It's gonna lead to nothing but more pain. I mean, if you don't care about your health, why should I? Still playing golf, Jess? I haven't for years. It's bad for his emphysema. What do you think they have golf carts for? I didn't bring my clubs. You'll rent some. Carson actually denied being here? Said he was away on leave. <laughs> Why are you really doing this, Jesse? I'm tired of living a lie, Lewis. Oh, come on. How long you been married? You never lied? Your wife never lied? If weren't for lies, would never get through. <coughs> they used me. They, uh, they also promoted you, Jess. We all know what that meant. You were a good soldier. You ought to stay that way. I don't want to go to my grave not knowing. I have a right to know. <clears throat> I think we all do. This is dangerous. Tell anybody I said any of this, I'll deny it. You understand? First of all, Carson was there. I know this because he took me to the site with him. Said he wanted another set of eyes on this. I guess you'd been sent off to Fort Worth. the town is here now the reason I, I'm not telling you anything is that I want your honest untarnished response and I don't care how far-fetched or foolish it is bye where it hit the ground but to me the most puzzling feature is we're unable to locate any rivets i mean how in the hell was that thing held together there aren't even any seams and as if that weren't weird enough there seems to be no engine no moving parts i mean how did that thing fly maybe the engine's somewhere else maybe this is just a part of it Two and a half miles east of here. Over here. Oh, just, just you, Mr. Carson. Wait here. you know 
So you never saw the second sight? Uh-uh. Stanton and Harris, you know them? No. Well, they're both here. They may have been at the second sight. Really? Well, what'd they see? Ask them. Come on, Lewis. Jesse, I can't tell you anything more. The Army's worked very hard to bury this. They want to keep it that way. You got up on that stage so I can help you. <laughs> Excuse me, fellas. Is one of you named Stanton? Yeah. Could I talk to you? <laughs> hey, he looks a little different from his picture. Okay, oh, hell, he's a lot older. <laughs> I think you uh, want to talk to him, too. Really? He flew the spotter plane. Yeah. I flew the one that found the second sight. Do you mind if I join you? No, not at all. Go ahead. I don't give a damn. I'll tell anyone. I mean it. I was flying Pan Am, right? And I spot this long, shiny thing like a cigar tube bigger than my plane. Practically runs into me. So I report it, like I'm supposed to, by the book. I fill out a mountain of papers. They canned me, fired, said I was unfit. Fine, I says, give me the lie detector test. Out, they says. That's what you get when you tell the truth. So fuck them, screw them. <laughs> About the second sight? The second sight, yeah. We were checking the area around the first sight, uh, Evidence of other debris and things like that. Suddenly I saw something kind of, well, glittering. I couldn't really tell what it was because of the sun's position, so I took her down for a closer look. It was a cylindrical object, I'd say 30 feet in length. Ah, uh, no. It was larger, round. Well, maybe not cylindrical. Circular, yeah, but it was dome-shaped, definitely, absolutely dome-shaped. It was not dome-shaped. Right, maybe domed is the wrong word. It was kind of like an egg. Yeah, an egg. How the hell did he ever get his pilot's license? <laughs> hey, hey, I saw it. And I saw the bodies, too. Bodies. Five or six of them. There weren't that many. No, all right, all right. I was flying fast. I didn't really have time to count. But I definitely saw three bodies, maybe four. The main point is, there were bodies. Yeah, of monkeys. Rhesus monkeys, chimpanzees, something like that. And what they were in was some kind of experimental rocket, like an A-9. And what happened was it exploded and went off range. And that's why it was all hushed up. I don't know who you are, but you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Really? I don't know what I'm talking about? Have you guys listened to yourselves? Hey, I know what a monkey looks like. That's not what I saw. From where? A hundred feet flying by, whiz, bang. That was a monkey with all of its hair singed off, his head swollen up like a melon from decompression. No eyes. They were popped out, leaving nothing but these black holes. That thing was like no monkey you ever saw. I've seen them. The government didn't launch monkeys till 52. Yeah? How do you know? You saw the bodies. You think they were monkeys? I didn't see any bodies. I smelled them. Come on. I'm telling you what I know. Brown saw the bodies. Brown. Melvin Brown. Sergeant Melvin Brown, my buddy. Now deceased. Him and me, we were supposed to guard whatever these... You know, on the way back to the base. So, what do you think's under there? They told us not to look. I'm not saying look, I'm saying think. I don't know. Whatever it is, I don't think the ice is doing the job. Hey, keep your head tilted this way. It's not so bad. It wasn't like an order. What? Not to look. I, I thought they said please. 
please. Whoever says please around here? He was yacking well, on about look, don't maybe look. I, should just I mean, look. I was curious too, but orders are orders. You're gonna tell if I do? Only if I'm asked. I'll tell you what, why don't you just face in that direction and then you won't know if I looked or not? Maybe I did, and maybe I did. All right. Did he ever tell you what it was he saw? He was too upset to talk about it. Well, I saw the coffins. We didn't know what we were building back then, but they told us they were just boxes, you know, but hey, they were four yes, little sir. boxes, one big one. Not to look. Just turn around and walk away. So you never saw what was in the ambulance? Right. Did you smell anything? Come on. No, I didn't smell anything. They're probably in body bags by then. You know who might have seen them? The mortician over at Corona? What's his name? Paul Davis? Uh, David Paulus? Something like that, I think. really think they'll come after you? Well, they said they would. Hey, th these guys were not kidding, all right? I mean, they even came in and picked up the press release, the one you guys sent out, from the radio station, from the newspaper. They just came in, picked it up, in and out, no more paper trail. Total denial. That rancher was threatened. The sheriff was threatened. I knew these people, and they threatened me. It was 30 years ago. Yeah, well, maybe I'll just wait 30 more. Well, I don't have 30 years. I probably don't have two. Now, I'm asking man to man. Well, if it's any help to you, I know that that weather balloon thing was a lie. <laughs> I know that. That's not what I'm here for. Look, I just don't want to get involved in this, all right? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it never goddamn happened now. Have you got it? Please. Please. Oh, hell. Nobody's going to believe it anyway. I was working late on this fella. I usually don't work at night, but the phone rings. Funeral home. It's some captain from the base. Uh, yes, captain, we carry those. How many? Well, <laughs> gee, that sure is an awful lot. Now, hold on and let me go see. So I checked to see how many small caskets we have. I'm afraid I only have one in stock, but now I could order more, of course. Now he asks something strange. Can it be what? Hermetically sealed. Well, uh, I, I guess they could, but uh, frankly, we don't have too much call for that around here. Uh, folks are generally pretty satisfied if these things just close. <laughs> and then he says he wants them tonight. Tonight. Uh, no, sir. Uh, the soonest that I could possibly have them for you would be day after tomorrow. 
So he asks how he can preserve the bodies now. Well, uh, in that case, I would say uh, dry eyes. Um, Captain, how, how did these kids die? I decided to go to the base myself to see if I could help. Hi, David. Go ahead. My girlfriend worked there as a nurse, and I figured she would know what was what. But as I drove on, I saw that the base was swarming with activity. Night lights, non-military guys in dark suits. It was like the whole place was on some kind of a alert. There been some kind of an accident, not that I know of. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I gather some kids were killed. Uh, at least that's what I understand. I wouldn't know about that. What the hell are you doing? Um, oh, I'm, I'm a local mortician. I was called by a captain, uh, some captain. Oh, okay. Janet. Janet. What's happening here? What are you doing here? Well, I was, I just thought that... Get out. I'm, I'm telling you, get out of here. I mean it. Hey, you. What are you doing? You don't belong here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me go! What the hell is this? Let me go! I can walk! Well, I was told there'd been an accident. You heard wrong. But I was called the cat. I said you heard wrong. You don't have to be so damn nasty. I called Janet, but she didn't want to talk. She said she might meet me when she got off work. Right. Um, may I take your order? Um, uh, same. Okay. So, what was going on back there? You must never tell anyone what I'm about to say. I want you to promise. Janet. Promise me. Promise. Okay, okay, I promise. Terrible things could happen to me if they found me. Let's see what you got. All right. David, the base is crawling with hot shots. Who? I don't know. These guys have been coming in from Washington on the oh, plane loads. Thank you. You're welcome. So? That's not all I saw. They were, they were fetus shaped. They were so, they had these, they weren't human, David. I walked in while they were performing their autopsies. God, the stench. People had their hands over their noses. Men I'd never seen before. They were, they were taking all these pictures of these bodies. Janet, no. She died in a plane crash. At least that's what they said. Hmm. 
No, he's not here right now. I've told you that. Who is this, please? Oh, Jess, just, where were who you? Is this? Jess, I'm scared. Come why, don't you, why don't you just tell me who this is, okay? Hello. Yes, hello. I know what you're trying to do. You should look into the case of Gary Ward. He committed suicide six months ago. Or was it a car accident? Great. Now, do you see where this is getting you? This is happening because I'm getting closer to it. You're close to nothing. Face it, Dad. You're never going to find what you're looking for. You just want an answer. Like there's some proof out there of God or an afterlife. UFOs, it's all the same thing. Something to hang on to when nothing makes sense. This is fantasy to make you feel better in the night. It's the truth. And you know it, or you used to know it. You were there, son, in the kitchen with me. You saw what I saw. You held it in your hands. Now, if you choose to run away from that, that's up to you. I'll do this alone. Please do it alone. Stop it. No, I will not. But you look what you're doing to us. Look what they're doing to us. something. I really admire you for what you're doing. Excuse me. Major, uh, can we talk? the body. No, sir, but uh, we know some people who did. One of them was on the medical staff, and the other was uh, helping recover the bodies from the crash scene. Well, what did they look like? No, one guy says that they were they were like real human with, with real smooth skin. That was the guy from the crash site. Right, but the other one... He was from the autopsy room, and he insists that they were really small, like children, but much frailer, and uh, they had sort of a scaly skin. Yeah, like a, like a reptile. Sort of. Yeah, and their heads were shaped sort of like eggs. No, no, like a pear, like an upside-down pear. A little more like eggs. Oh, were these guys making this up? Uh-uh, no way, neither of them. We know these guys. They were really scared. Look, I was shot down over Japan, okay? I know what scared looks like. It was nothing compared to the look on these guys' faces. Captain Henry Enoch, who left us... One rainy morning in August of 1969, and Lieutenant Colonel Everett Pryor, who passed away one year ago today. You will all be sorely missed. Bugler, please. We hear you're thinking about talking. That could be very risky. I've been tracking this story, and I know the chances you're taking. Who are you? Some people call me Townsend. My name's not important. I've been on the same search that you have, but I think I may have gone much deeper. I don't know if I believe it all, but this is what I found out. Supposedly, four tiny bodies were recovered from the crash, right? Right. Well, they did bring them back here to the base. Eyes almond-shaped, uh, no discernible auditory lobes, skin texture slightly scaly, almost reptilian, stretchable, somewhat elastic over what feels like smooth muscle. 
or skeletal tissue. There's no striated muscle discernible. In the thoracic area, also no striated muscle. Mouth would seem to be a wrinkle type fold. A colorless liquid present in the body doesn't seem to be what we call blood. Uh, seems to have no uh, digestive system, uh, no gastrointestinal tract. Uh, there's no rectal area. No reproductive organs. No genitalia. No teeth. Uh, the mouth opens onto a cavity about two inches hey! deep. And uh, this one just moved. was alive? It was alive. This information went straight to the president, and his response was to form a top-secret commission to deal with it. Under what agency will we be operating? None. We will have complete control. Morning, Mr. Secretary. Morning. And our mandate, exactly? To investigate the event and all of its uh, implications. The technology. And any other such events should they occur. But most of all, to safeguard the public interest. That's why this information has to be so carefully controlled. I mean, think of our religious institutions. I mean, if this were all to just come out, what are people going to believe in? Not to mention the effect on our social and our political institutions. Even the military. Especially the military. I mean, what the hell are we dealing with here? Is it friendly? Is it hostile? Maybe it's neither. Maybe they're just studying us the way we study insects. Well, the point is, there could be panic if this all came out. And we're supposed to ensure domestic tranquility, not eliminate it. I mean, what, what if people think that we are not in control of the skies? They'd be right. Well, what about leaks? Someone's bound to say something. Well, as long as we control the way the information is released, Leaks shouldn't necessarily hurt us. In fact, mingled with a little well-placed disinformation, they should help. Hoaxes. Oh, yes, certainly. And also, accurate information released from less than reputable sources. Well, that's not such a bad technique, either. Recruit a group of crackpots. Exactly. Gentlemen, if you'd open the folders in front of you... As you can see... Under magnification, the creature's skin appears to be uh, mesh-like. It's rather like that of a lizard. Has there been any communication? From it to us? Uh, I'm not sure. Possibly. We believe that it may use some form of uh, uh, thought projection. At least, that's what the men who've been close to it seem to think. How long do we keep this to ourselves? Well, there's no telling. We will determine that. Why? I think mankind has the right to know about something as significant as this. Well, yes, of course. But we don't intend to keep this under wraps forever. Right. Okay. Good, fine. So what they decided to do was build some secret bases out in the middle of the desert to study all this. But Secretary Forrestal demanded that he see for himself what was going on out there. Oh, well, let me check. 
check and I'll see what I can do, okay? He knows you're here. I thought this was mirrored. It is. Jesus. What's the matter, James? Huh. More of them are coming. What do you mean? Different ones. Not like him. Many different races. Different species. They're coming. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. No, 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 no. Something's happening here. Norman, we're losing him. Check the cardiogram for arrhythmia. Get an endotube, stat. Communicate. Also dropping. Tell me what to do. Please. What can we do for you? Where's the body? The one that died. Have you seen it? No. I have seen photographs. A photograph can be faked. That's true. But the people whose word I've come to rely on insist they were not. What's more, they maintain that Secretary Forstall was correct when he said he somehow sensed that more of them would be coming. And they say further contact did in fact take place. Now, if that's true, then what happened here is merely the tip of the iceberg. Thank you all for coming, ladies and gentlemen. I hope we all meet again soon. The most talked about incident is said to have occurred at Holloman Air Force Base in 1964. I wasn't there personally, but I'm given to understand that a disc actually landed by intention. And then, an exchange with alien life forms occurred. You know the movie, Close Encounters? Yeah. It was based on that incident. But they may not have gotten it quite right. You see, physicists now speculate that it's unlikely these things fly vast distances from other solar systems, but that they come from a place that's much closer and farther away. You see, they may not be just one universe. Did you know that mathematicians now theorize that there could be multiverses, other dimensions that coexist with our own, and that these beings have the technology to somehow just slip in and out. Another alien visitor claimed that his race had been looking in on us for centuries, and that they had in fact influenced the course of human history in some rather critical and startling ways. This visitor somehow displayed the way aliens have been genetically altering the development of our DNA from our very beginnings, and that they had inspired our greatest spiritual leaders. You're telling me that the missing link could be the result of alien genetics? I believe this information is correct, but who can really say for certain? Mom, did you see where Dad went? No, I didn't. Oh, well, it's... Okay, let's let's not worry about it. I'm not worried about it. Not anymore. Do you see what's happened? No. There's a man that you and I used to know when you were a boy. A soldier that was your dad. He's back. Over the years, there must be people like me, people who wanted to talk about what they know. I'm sure there were some. But then it's also hard to believe, isn't it? I think that Secretary Forrestal tried, or may have, I'm not sure. 
While he was at Bethesda, he was working on a diary that was said to contain an account of his experiences with alien life forms and proof that the government was trying to keep all this information covered up. Apparently, he had checked into the hospital for overexhaustion and stress. I'm sure that you personally can sympathize with how difficult it would have been for him to reveal all these secrets. If Secretary Forrestal left any kind of note, it was never found, and his diaries are still classified. Since then, things have gotten even more bizarre. Planes vanishing, cattle mutilations, human abductions, and then there are the stories of Area 51. What is Area 51? That's where people swear they've actually seen recovered alien craft, and that we're working with them right now. How long have we had this, Colonel? Well, that depends on who you talk to. The top part is anti-gravitation. Is this all true? Well, that's a good question. One must proceed cautiously here, on guard against one's desire to want it to be true or want it not to be true. One must be, as much as possible, neutral. Well, how can you be neutral? A thing is either true or it's not. There is no middle ground. All right. then none of it is true. None of it? Well, maybe some of it. No. Oh. Now you're playing with me. Why are you playing with me? Because maybe you wouldn't even know what was true if you'd seen it all for yourself. How's that for an answer? All right, then what did I see out there in that field? Oh, that. Why, that was a weather balloon. Ha! No, it wasn't. I know what I saw, and it was not from this world. Don't you understand, Jesse? You have nothing. Just a lot of old memories and secondhand recollections. Nobody is going to take you seriously. Not without proof. Not without hard evidence. But please, feel free to tell anybody anything that I've said here this afternoon. Because maybe it really is true. And the public has a right to know, don't they?
Thank you. 